Declining revenue from the federal and state governments continues to impact many local governments and school districts. What can you do to ensure more federal dollars come to the Upper Peninsula? Uh, well, you know, we, we had that uh, for 18 years, a member of Congress that worked here on a bipartisan basis to deliver, and that was Congressman Stupak. You know, we need to have a member of Congress that goes there, rolls up their sleeves, and works to bring back the needed dollars. Uh, we first also need to make sure that the dollars are there. We need to make sure that we have fair taxation policies. Uh, you know, in 1952, our corporate share of tax revenue was 32%. In 2012, it's now down to 10%. The wealthy and the well-connected are rigging our tax code to shorten us, to shorten our revenue streams. We've got to make sure that we have tax fairness um, to bring in the revenue, and uh, it's our, we've got a 72,000 page tax code that has been rigged for the wealthy and the well connected. Second, it's about showing up, it's about working. You know, as, as the judge said, you know, when we get closer to election, um, our, our schedules get hectic. But as you become a member of Congress, your word matters. Um, that's why I'm disappointed here that Jack Burley couldn't make it. Showing up and working and keeping your word is a big part of being a member of Congress. And tonight, Jack showed us precisely what kind of member of Congress he'd be for us. We need someone that's going to go there and, and work hard to deliver the federal dollars for infrastructure spending, for the new Sioux Rock, for education spending. Um, not someone who's going to go to Washington and, and be part of a partisan bickering uh, problem that we will continue to see. Um, you know, what you'll see in me is someone who believes that we need to invest in and protect our best assets here, our people, our land, and our Great Lakes, and I'll, and I'll govern them uh, accordingly. Thank you. Mr. Johansson, your question, if you identify for whom the question is addressed, to whom it is addressed. I'd like to address this question to Kennedy Johnson and to Kennedy Bergman, if you've been here. Last January, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration jointly announced that the year 2015 was the hottest year on record since records began to be kept back in 1880. The previous hottest year was 2014, and the hottest years ever recorded, 15 out of 17 have come since the year 2000. This year, the Earth has had its warmest January, August on January through August on record, and it appears inevitable that 2016 may wind up being the Earth's hottest year on record, topping both the previous years, 2014 and 15. The question: Do you agree with the consensus of world climate scientists that climate change is real, caused by humans, and is already having major impacts on human civilization? Civilization. Or do you consider that we are simply experiencing uh, naturally occurring weather changes and that claims to the contrary are just junk science? Please. Two minutes, please. I, I, believe. I believe climate change is real. Um, I believe that we, uh, we can do things to address this. Um, on the uh, power generation, power distribution, uh, and power usage. Uh, front. Um, I believe that we need to take a, a holistic look at how we use energy uh, in our country and we need to make the needed investments. When it comes to our environment though we have to pay a particular close attention to our Great Lakes. You know, we have been blessed with 21% of the world's fresh water right here. You know we we have an obligation to, um, to protect those fresh waters. Uh, we have an opportunity here to do a number of things. Number one, we need to shut down Line 5. We have a pipeline that's running through the Straits of Mackinac right now that has not been independently inspected. We can shut that down, that pipeline down, at line, at the Straits of Mackinac, and still deliver propane to the UP. Two, we need to uh, ban hydraulic horizontal fracking. Horizontal fracking displaces an enormous amount of, of our fresh water. And third, we need to protect against invasive species. 
that needs to be addressed. Invasive species would wreak havoc uh, upon our, our fresh water. You know, we've always had the same challenge here in northern Michigan. How do we, how do we keep us both beautiful and profitable and make a living? We can strike that balance. We, we, struck, we struck that balance with mining, with logging, and we can continue to do it and to protect our planet.